So what is up you guys? It's your spiritual friend I'm with it and I am back. Okay. I am back with another read. Today's a reading is gonna be kind of like a reading, kind of just like a smoke session. Um, I kind of just want to channel and talk to y'all. Go ahead, pull some cards a little bit later. But today's topic is going to be like being the bigger person in relationships, being who God wanted you to be or intended for you to be. Um, I definitely feel like my channel is gravitated towards people like me. So God's children, star seeds, empaths, people who believe in spirituality, people who are just naturally good people, maybe the black sheep of the family, people who don't have a lot of friends, um, people who are different, people who think outside of the box, entrepreneurs, people who are into tarot readings, people who have locks, people who like being a mom, people who love love. I don't know. You know, I feel like if you're guided over here you're a good person period that's just how i feel about it right so we're gonna go ahead and talk about that today and pull some cards and kind of just see where the conversation takes us if you don't like smoking with your spiritual shit i understand that boo but i smoke on this channel um i feel like when you get big on youtube it's unprofessional to be smoking like even the smoke channels they act like oh my god i'm smoking cbd and like even like where it's illegal like california youtubers be like oh i'm smoking cbd i don't know it's just it's a thing and i don't really like it even on youtube they're starting to censor like truth or dares so it's kind of like what used to be a fun creative job is now just a career like you gotta work just as hard if not harder way fucking harder than your nine to five so anyway i don't know how we got on that topic but let's go ahead and spark up and go ahead and get the conversation rolling so like i said today we will be talking about um being the bigger person in your relationships and i wrote this up last night but it got a hole in it so i just stopped smoking it it was too hard to smoke i wasn't enjoying it and who wants to smoke if they're not enjoying a blend it still got a hole in it i'm probably still not going to enjoy it that much but i figured at least we can go ahead and get a video out of it right all right so go ahead and spark up y'all cheers all right so being the bigger person so i kind of feel like in a lot of our relationships right now we're experiencing having to show up for one another like whether it be a friendship whether it be a relationship whether it's for your parent for your child i feel like we're kind of in a season of like showing up for one another especially because we did just have a rough last three to four years like We are kind of post-COVID. Um, it's like it's such a different world. The world will never be the same now. We will never go back to what it was like before we was wearing masks and shit. So, I don't know. It's just crazy. <laughs> but, um, you know, we went through so much just experiencing COVID, experiencing so many fatal losses. A lot of people lost family members, um, friends, loved ones, close people, kids in their school, high school kids losing people for the first time, like on some random shit. Like I ain't never heard of this shit before. I'm in high school and my whole school shut down for a year. I don't get no senior prom or I'm depressed at home, not eating because my parent work at this time and so much shit, you know, happened to the world, to everybody. I'm not going to say to everybody, but I feel like COVID affected more than just America. I don't know. I feel like COVID affected the fucking world and shit that happens in America affects the world. Like it just is what it is. We're all affected by each other. We're all connected, you know, so I feel like after such a depressing, sorrow-filled, sad time, I think God really just kind of wants us to find each other again, whether that's our soul tribes, whether that's our family members. If you haven't noticed, a lot of families are reconnecting like 
I remember three, four years ago, like being like holidays don't feel the same. Christmas is not the same. My family don't come over. I won't really do shit for holidays like that. Um, shit is just different. Like going in a grocery store feel different. You know, everything tastes different. Like childhood snacks and shit. Like the chips that I used to love, cereals, snack cakes. Everything has changed. So I feel like we're living in a state where everybody is kind of, I don't want to say everybody is a zombie because everybody not. Some people are really woke the fuck up and like, oh, they shit. But the world just feels so weird. And it's like, it's so much bad shit happening that I feel like we kind of have to just be in a state of having compassion for one another. Like, it's not about who fucking who over, who doing who bogus, what like. Sometimes it's just like motherfuckers just doing the best that they can. Like really though, and you could be thinking a motherfucker trying to hurt you or do something bad to you or fucking you over, and it's not even that. Like a motherfucker can't even fathom talking to you or dealing with you or experiencing you or being a good friend to you showing up at your baby shower coming to your your birthday party and shit like that they don't want to be around nobody or maybe they are envious or maybe they are jealous of you and it's not even on purpose maybe they're not trying to feel that shit or they don't want to that's why they distancing themselves because they love you but in their heart they sad that they don't got their shit going how they want it to go so they feel it's some type of way i don't know but I feel like in this season, it's just, it's time to have compassion for one another. It's time to really, really love each other kinder, like better. But I don't know. I just look at some of the ways that I've loved, even when I thought that I was the best friend ever, like I could still, think of shit where it's like man I ain't had to say that shit to her I ain't had to treat her like that I ain't had to do her like that like that was fucked up even mom was like I spent a lot of my teenage years mad at my mom like I'm talking like not I wouldn't say like oh my god I hate you mom like not like that not that deep but blaming her like blaming her for my sexual trauma blaming her for why I felt lonely Blaming her for who I was, what I was, what I had going on. Like, I just... To me, shit, you my mom. Like, this shit your fault. Like, you know? And now that I'm a mom and I'm, like, a single mom at that, experiencing miscarriages and grief and car breaking down and shit, like, Little shit where it's like, damn, I just want to have compassion. I remember feeling like, why the fuck mama don't got no car, bro? Like, she a teacher. Like, everybody else around me, mamas don't even got jobs. And they mamas got more than this. Like, why? I didn't know my mama bills. I didn't know what the fuck mama had going on. I didn't know mama was taking care of whole families and shit. Like, I didn't know. It's a lot of shit you don't know as a kid. And I'm realizing, like, damn, my daughter be like, mommy, I don't want to catch the city bus. Like, I don't want to walk. I don't want to, like, why can't we just get in your car? I'm like, girl, because I got a flat tire and I don't got no man. I don't got no, like, my mama be so busy. She can't just stop what she doing to come help me. And I can't drive it to go get the flat tire fixed. And all the gas stations around me, the air pumps is fucking broke. So I can't even, like, pump up the tire to drive to a place. I mean, I guess I could call, like, a mobile mechanic, but, like, who? You try to find people on Facebook, they want to charge you just to come out and see some shit. Then it's, like, I don't know. It's just shit, but it's just, like, damn, like, shit that I know that I got going on. Even me and my baby used to, every Friday, go to Walmart or Family Dollar and get her a toy before I took her to my mama's house. Every Friday. Last year, after Jonathan passed and... Yeah, after Jonathan passed, I wasn't able to do that shit no more. And it was like, she noticed, like, 
I can't ask for toys or like I get snappy if I can't buy her something like why are you always asking for stuff and I was like because she's a fucking kid because <laughs> she's a fucking kid so just learning to have compassion for yourself for other people around you I think is really really going to be a highlight for this year because we're recovering like the world is in recovery you know it was I, I was gonna say it was constant <laughs> um that's where I live y'all but um the world like you know the United States even other countries is going through some fucking terrible ass shit worse shit than us and it's just like the the state of Gaia the state of the earth the whole planet earth it just I feel like in shambles on some weird shit. I don't know. It just feel like Earth is fighting back, kind of. Like, fuck y'all. I don't know what the fuck y'all got going on. What y'all trying to do to me, but fuck y'all. It's like, I used to think that the world was just going to end. But I promise you, I feel like it's just the humans that's going to end. It's not the world. Like, I really used to think that the world was just going to end and it was going to be nothing. But I think it's just going to be something else, like, that they're fucking creatures like this AI shit that we're seeing, motherfucking walking robots and shit. That's probably gonna be the next thing. Or to be honest, it's so much fucking bestiality in this world. But I feel like we already had that type shit, like half humans and horses and you know mixed shit, all that mythical shit, unicorns and shit. Unicorns was in the Bible. They was on the Ark of Noah. Don't quote me on that. But, uh, the Ark of Noah. I don't even know if that's what it's called. Like, Noah's Ark, is that? I don't, I don't even know. That's how you can tell how uneducated I am when it comes to religion and stuff like that. So, I try not to even, don't even take my word for shit because I don't know. Okay? But, um, this woman, Circa Trova, I follow her. And um, she's always talking about the Book of Enoch, the Lost Books, and just the Bible and di diving into certain things you know about religion and about the lord and about god and about the world <laughs> and shit like that but yeah but yeah i wanna i wanna learn how to show up for people because the past couple of years just really showed me that like I don't have anybody who knows how to show up for me. Like, um, and here's the thing. I do have my mom and she shows up for me. She taught me how to show up. Like, She taught me that even if somebody not answering the phone, come anyway, like come to their house, show up for them, show like bring them food or, you know, like, learn how to take care of people because that's what i'm gonna do mama is a nurturer naturally she's going to take care of you she's going to take care of kids she's going to take care of people she's going to take care of animals she's she's going to take care of people and um i think that i thought that was a curse growing up because mama helped so many people and i watched her get hurt i watched my mom struggle like go without us not be broke but my mom is a teacher for NPS. So she it's like in the summertime, your money don't look the same as throughout the school year. So for us, my birthday in the summertime, we gotta keep up with rent, we gotta keep up with bills. It was just it was always hard for us in the summer. But even though people knew it was hard for us in the summer, you got my uncle Key like coming to stay with us for the whole summer. And eating us out of house to home, being bad, taking up my time, like irritating me. And I'm a teenager at the time, so I'm not understanding that they parents probably got shit going on in their crib that the kids don't need to be around, or they probably don't got enough food or money to feed all of these kids. Like, my, I got a big ass family, and all the men in my family got at least three plus kids. Like, damn near all of them got five, except for my uncle Sufi, he don't got no kids. But, I was going to say, damn, I don't even know my Uncle Sweepy name. Like, his real name, but I do this Rodney. <laughs> That's crazy. My Uncle Nunu. I guess his name, Demetrius. I guess I know all their names. I don't know why I thought I didn't know his name for a minute. It's crazy when you're so used to calling somebody their nickname. Like, 
it's crazy. I remember growing up, I always wanted a nickname. Like, I used to give myself nicknames because my name is Caprice. So, like, what you, what you gonna call me? Like, Caprice. Like, what you, like I, it ain't Kuka. Like, I pre pre. Like, I don't know. I don't know. What you, like, what you gonna call me? You know, so. Growing up, I wanted a nickname so bad. I named myself Reese, and that is still my name to this day. People W is Reese or Reese Latrice. They say it wrong, but it was my Facebook name for so long that people think that's my real name in my city. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I feel like in this season, it really just. I don't know. It's time to be living. Like, think about all the shit that's going on. Like, I don't watch the news and shit, but I'm big on, like, the shade room and the neighborhood talk. Like, when I get on social media, I don't get on social media every single day. Like, I don't go to Instagram every single day. I used to. I should. I want to. I need to because I'm a content creator, but I don't. Because I just don't like looking at other people's lives. I don't know. I don't feel like I follow the right people. Nah, because I tried to like clean my shit up and only follow like spiritual people and famous people. And even then, I'm just like, I love Janae Aiko, but I don't want to watch your story every day. I don't know. It's just like, girl, I don't know you for real. So, like, what? I don't know. I don't know. But when I go to the shade room or I go to where I go get my news from social media, it's always a bombing. I said a bombing. I didn't even mean that. But a shooting or somebody died or they did this to this person or a um, fake suicide. Like, if y'all haven't noticed, they're blaming suicide. They're blaming people. They're, they're acting like people are committing suicide and really people are being killed like it's it's a lot going on it, it's a lot going on and i just feel like it's a lot of demonic shit going on it's a lot of shit in the music industry in the fame industry in the youtube streets like it's a lot of drama like it's a lot of fighting like it's a lot of fighting. I don't know what city y'all live in, but my city crazy. It's a lot of stealing of cars. We got Kia boys in Milwaukee. Y'all Shit is wild right now. Like, literally, like, shit is fucking wild. Gas is $4. <laughs> Eggs is 7 Milk is 5 Like, I mean, I just, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's a crazy time right now. So, if you got people in your life who are maybe going through something or experiencing something, I feel like now is not the time to be in your feelings about that shit. Like, now is just not the time, okay? I don't know why I felt like I wanted to say that. But, baby, I feel like now is not the time. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and tap into this reading. This is going to be a reading for, like, relationships, connections, friendships, um, anything, any type of sacred connection that you got up in your life. We're going to go ahead and tap into it. So we're going to maybe tap into, like, why they're distant, what your person is potentially going through, maybe what you're going through that you have not discussed with your person that maybe you need to express to them. We're going to go ahead and tap into it, get into it, because... Yeah. yeah all right so we got nostalgia which I was thinking in my head, like, remember I was talking about, and it got the number 33, but, you know, like, she don't taste the same, she not the same, um, this could be just, like, grief, you know, loss, memories, like, thinking about the people that you lost, thinking about the friends that you lost, um, so if you're in a commitment with somebody, if you got a friend or something like that, this person could have lost a job, this person could have be losing finances, this person could have lost a family member, this person could have lost... A relationship they could be single now like newly single don't want to tell you because they want to get back with them there are so many things that is maybe like potentially on this person's mind that you are not aware of so it's like it's the energy of like you don't know everything like you know some things but you could never fathom everything that this person is going to going through I was going to say going to, so maybe this person could have somewhere that they need to maybe like travel to, go to. It feels like family business, like having to like sign a will or sign a will. Maybe somebody's like the reading of a will is like happening. It's like you got to go to the South or you like. Somebody could just be experiencing, like, loss. Um, I'm also hearing, like, somebody's family member could have dementia. They're not telling you about that. 
Um, this could be somebody having to be like a healthcare worker for a family member and they could be being secretive about that. I feel like there's a lot of secrets happening, but it's not malicious. You know, it feels like focus on the here and now, like don't focus on what you don't know about because it'll be revealed or it'll come out like it's not. No, it's not. It's. I don't want to say it's not that serious, but I feel like there are other things that maybe you can focus on. So like your own life or what you got going on. Um, yeah, because you got the bitch fire. Stand up for yourself. I feel like there's also kind of something with you. And it's crazy because she has like this red on her nails. And then I got this red on this nail. And it kind of just feels like and then the nails are kind of like pointy. Right. So stand up for yourself. It's kind of like. Even if you're put in a position of feeling like uh, like I'm it's, it's kind of like dreamy or like even if you're feeling in a state of like sadness or grief because you're maybe losing out on this person. I feel like you also have to stand up for yourself and realize that maybe you're just a stronger, I heard the stronger twin. So maybe you have a twin and you and your twin experience the loss of a parent or something um, where it's like y'all experienced it together, but maybe y'all felt differently. I'm also hearing molestation. So if like you and your sister was molested, you could have had to watch your sister be molested. I'm sorry if, you know, that's a sensitive topic to someone, but um yeah, it just feels kind of like realizing that, like, it's okay. And then also, I don't know why I just looked at Poppy. Um, and it's like, dun, 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 dancing. I don't know, I'm getting trolls. So somebody could have been watching trolls today or listening to trolls today. Um, this stand up for yourself. It says Poppy and Ivy. I don't know, maybe people can always like compare y'all to or you could potentially be like the little sister or like the little brother or it's like you have to like maybe even take charge of the family, but in taking charge of the family, there could have been some emotional incest here. not on purpose but it's like if you had a mother who was single this is like your mother treating you as her spouse like you paying the bills or you rubbing her feet and not saying that like a child shouldn't do that for their mother but it's just like it's very intimate um and it feels like you never really had the space to maybe voice that or speak that or maybe you didn't even remember that or you didn't understand that and it feels now like you are being awakened to your memory so somebody could be unlocking memories for you so if you having like long conversations i feel like things are coming out about your childhood or about your past that maybe you've been embarrassed to speak about or um you didn't want to hurt anyone else so maybe you didn't bring it up I also kind of feel like this is you understanding that somebody is depressed and not enabling them, like not just leaving them alone or not just um, letting them be mean to you or just letting them treat you bad. Or, you know, like if you notice your kid in a room all the time, it's not just assuming that they have an attitude, but it's being like, hey, like, let's get up and go do something or I need you to do this. Or it's like even if they're going to piss and moan about it and be upset about it they still need responsibility. You can't care so much about their feelings and how they gonna feel that you're gonna not do what they need because it's like putting your kid on punishment or whooping them or disciplining them. Yeah, of course you don't necessarily want to and it don't make you feel good and you're gonna feel guilty. But at the same time, it's something that is very necessary. Like it's something that has to happen in a way
So yeah, I definitely feel like if you've been feeling guilty about how you reacted to somebody's behavior while they were depressed or while they were maybe in a reminiscent state or like um, in a dreamy state, I feel like this is about forgiving yourself and just realizing that it's definitely okay to stand up for yourself even if a person is maybe experiencing um grief or loss um i definitely feel like this could be a friend who's kind of like she's single now and she could be going through something or just having a hard time in her relationship and i feel like it's always like a i'm gonna leave you and i'm gonna come back i'm gonna leave you and i'm gonna come back and it feels like you can't keep doing that. Like, I love you and I'm going to be here for you every time you come back. But I want you to know that every time you do it, it makes me feel some type of way. I get that when you're arguing with your man, you don't have the mental capacity to maybe give to me. Or you don't want me to ask you about what's going on with y'all because then you're going to cry or then you're going to feel guilty about lying or then you're going to feel some type of way because you know what you're dealing with. It's like, I understand that, but also... I need you to be a good friend as well. So be vulnerable with me or tell me that you're not okay or tell me that, hey, I don't want no advice. I don't want no judgment. I don't want no feedback. I just, I just, I just want to be around you or I just want to say this to you. I just want to tell you this, but I don't want to talk about it. Or shit, whatever. I don't know. But I definitely feel like the energy is kind of, we need each other. Let's not. Let's not keep hurting each other every time we get hurt. Type of situation. This could be parents bickering back and forth. So it's like, you're feeling kind of like, damn, like all my parents do is argue or, you know, like this is all that I've seen. And I feel like you could be keeping yourself quiet, not wanting to argue with the partner, even though you're being mistreated. You know, it just feels like you don't want to say anything. You don't want to cause any drama. And I feel like the drama is being created in your head now because you know that you're not happy. You know, but the only way to make it better, how is that for happily ever after? It's like, ah, fuck all this shit up. <laughs> like, come on. You know, I feel like you want your way and you want it how you want it. You know, so... If you know that you want that person in your life, regardless of how they're treating you or regardless of their actions at that moment or right now, I feel like slow down and celebrate yourself. Like, it's okay. Like, take yourself out of your own shoes and put yourself in theirs and, you know, understand that people go through shit. And then just kind of celebrate yourself and be appreciative that you're not going through all of that. And it's not to say, oh my God, I would never want to be in your shoes oh my god you dirty you went through this really you know it's nothing like that but the energy just kind of feels like i can only be here for you if you let me so i'm appreciative that god made me strong enough to be here for you so when you need me guess what i'm gonna be your rock this is like not getting mad at your little brother your little sister for just being a kid or doing kid shit not getting mad at your kid for jumping on the couches and shit like this is just being like, look, I'm not, I'm not even finna do all of that right now. So if you're in a relationship and it's like a co-parenting, not a co-parenting relationship, but a relationship where it's like you're a single mom and you're dating somebody and this is like somebody trying to like maybe get to know your child or, you know, something like that. But like kind of be patient with yourself. Like you're a good mom. You know, you're a good mom, so if you're nervous about maybe introducing them or you feel like there's going to be judgment or anything like that, I don't know why I'm picking that up, but I am. It just feels like, again, slow down and celebrate yourself. Like, you don't need this person to be this child's father or mother if you're a single dad. You know, um, I feel like there is a lot of loneliness or, like, because... She looks like she in a basement or a castle or something, but it's a whole bunch of spider webs. If y'all can see them. Like, it's a whole bunch of spider webs. So it's kind of like cobwebs. Like, you know, maybe be celibate. Or maybe your partner is not in the energy of like, oh, I want to be intimate. You know, it's just like, I just want to.
cuddle. I just want to lay down and, you know, my money not right, so I don't really want to have sex or my mind not where it's supposed to be. I'm kind of going through a lot. I'm experiencing a lot with my family or just, you know, with my baby mama or my kids. It just feels like if you are a woman dating a man with a child, don't take what he got going on with his baby mama personal because you don't know how stressed out he is. You don't know... You know, you could have your own preconceived notions of what it's like to be a baby mama, baby daddy, but you don't know what they've been through, what their situation is. Even if he tells you, you know, you only get his perspective or what you want to take from the situation. So I definitely feel like make sure that you're putting yourself in a space of, I like me, you know, like I got me, I know what I'm doing. You know, you don't have to take it personal if he can't spend time with you and he got to spend time with his kids or, you know, like he can't talk to you today or he can't get up with you. He got kids, like, you know, or, you know, it is what it is um, or vice versa, like realizing that you may expect your woman to always be there for you, to always show up when you want her to or be nice when you going through something and shit like that not realizing she got her whole own shit that she's going through like yeah you're depressed or you're going through something or you you know you expect what you expect out of your woman maybe you expect a home cooked meal every time you come home but you don't even know that she had a horrible fucking day at work bitches was talking shit the kids is bad didn't want to go to sleep the house is still a mess. She didn't have time. Meanwhile, she's stressed out trying to get in the shower so she don't smell funky when you come home. So, yeah, the food not cooked, but I was trying to get in the shower first, and then, you know, I was going to cook it. You can be in the kitchen with me. We can be laughing and smoking and waiting till the food get done. Like, what, what you mad? Because the food not done? And I just had this stressful-ass day, and it was one thing that I couldn't do for you, and you were upset. But then as that woman, not even taking it to heart, like, that's my man. That's what he used to. It ain't my fault that I didn't have the food ready. But you know what? To avoid an argument, hey, babe, look, it ain't that serious. My bad. But I need you to understand me, too. The food going to get done. Just how we finna do it. You just got to wait a little a little second. Give me that grace and I'm going to give you that grace too. So now we both ain't got to be upset. It is what it is. Right? So, yeah. That's going to be it for this reading. I hope you guys enjoyed it. The overall message was pretty much to just give each other grace. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Share it on all your social medias. And I am out of here, you guys.